So, welcome to a video. Today, I am holding in my hands a PlayStation 4 controller. And you might be wondering why am I holding a random PS4 controller? Well, the reason why is because I would rather be holding a PS5 controller, but at the moment, I simply can't get my hands on a new PlayStation 5 console. As everyone sort of knows at the moment, they're really hard to come by. Places are completely sold out. It's becoming one of the best selling consoles ever. And what that means is when there's sort of chaos, there is opportunity. And today I want to talk about a company called Immersion Corporation, who are really the brains behind some of the great feedback that PlayStation, in particular Sony, have been getting from the gaming world for their controller and the sort of revolutionary sort of technology they have in it. So stay tuned and I'll talk about why there's so much opportunity in this company. Right, so if we're going to talk about IMMR, we have to talk about um, the PlayStation 5 controller. And it is an absolute smash hit. Everywhere you look online, it's considered to be one of the greatest controllers ever made. And from an outsider looking in, you might be asking why. It's got nothing to do with, you know, the shape of the controller, nothing to do with the color scheme, nothing silly like that. It's got everything to do with the triggers. And this is IMMR's you know, main product, it's those haptic feedback triggers. And as you can see here, um, the PS5 DualSense controller is a literal game changer. And that's from the Polygon, which is a a website um, that mainly does sort of films and, and movies. Um, and across this whole article, they'll say, um, they'll, they'll talk about loads of different things, but really the haptics are fantastic. And you, know, you can go into IGN and they say exactly the same thing, IGN being another really good um, game sort of reviewing uh, company. And they say here, beautifully implemented next-gen haptics and adapted trigger resistance create opportunities for more immersive experiences through tactile feedback. And why is this important? Well, Think of this, if you play the first person shooter again, um, game on your own, uh, you'll know you just pull down that trigger and there's there's no resistance. But if you're now playing Call of Duty and you're, you're holding an LMG, you'd expect there to be some resistance when you're pressing the the uh, the right trigger, you know, to represent shooting the gun. And now there actually is with the PlayStation controller. So it, it begins to open up doors into new worlds, you know, really creating a, a a newer reality of, of what it feels like and what it's like to play a game. And that's big stuff. And this is really the beginning of the sort of implementation of this sort of technology into the gaming world. Xbox don't do this. Um, I think the Switch technically has some of this, but it's more of the haptic feedback on the touchscreen um, and less to do with sort of triggers. So there's definitely a market out there. It, it's considered to be fantastic technology at the moment and things that are that I think are going to be adopted elsewhere. So not only has the Immersion Corporation got their haptic technology in the PlayStation 5 controller, but there there is signs that there might be the inclusion of the same technology or similar technology in the new PS5 virtual reality controller. And that makes a lot of sense. Uh, PlayStation are probably, or they're looking to at least create a new VR headset. And, and with that would come a new controller. They have a new paint here, which uh, actually specifies the use of um, haptic technology. This looks like another avenue of um, sales generation. And the reason why this is really important, you know, like I can just list you a number of different items that IMMR actually or Immersion Corporation have their technology in, including cars. But what's important here is that you want haptic technology to become the standard where everybody expects it to be in their device. Now, once that becomes the case, then uh, Immersion Corporation, which has all these patents, can really begin to take advantage and really begin to make a lot of revenue. Not only do we need to look at the sort of potential revenue, but we also need to look at what they're currently doing. And I've been in, an investor in Immersion Corporation for a little while now. Um, I came in uh, December 9th, roughly, um, at $8.50 a share, sold at fifteen thirty maybe a month ago, and bought more shares at $10 um, just before the Q Q4 um, results came out and my expectation was that sort of revenue would be higher and cost would be lower and I, I guess we've seen some of that in the results but not really and the reason why I say that is if you look at the Q4 results they did beat a lot of the estimates you know revenue was higher um, operating results were higher um, 
and so on and so forth. Is, they're good results. But what's actually sort of interesting is that despite the fact we know that um, the PlayStation 5 sold, what, four, five, six million um, consoles between uh, November and December, some, somewhere about there, their IMMR, or Immersion Corporation's revenue, um, actually didn't really increase that much more. So what I think a lot of investors were were anticipating was that maybe they'd get a dollar per controller. You know, you got to think of it in those sort of figures. And every console sold comes with one controller. Um, and what we actually see in the results is that um, for the quarter end, for the three months, gaming went from 6% of revenue to 19% of revenue, which is good. That's, an, that's a 13% increase in the contribution of revenue. But if you think that actual... Uh, that revenue didn't increase that much. I think if you did the maps, it comes out to about 25 to 30 cents per controller. Now, that's, that's not bad money. Don't get me wrong. I think over the next probably 10 years, there will be about 100 million PlayStation 5 consoles sold, potentially double that in terms of um, the amount of controllers sold because, as you know, uh, people that buy more than just one controller, so sometimes buy two, three, you know, they break and so on and so forth. So there's revenue generation there, but it's not as much as people expect. So let's presume it's 25 cents per controller sold. You sell 100 million controllers, that's $25 million over 10 years. It's a good amount of revenue, but it's not an enormous amount of revenue to justify only one investment. Yeah, talking about the sort of royalty per controller sold, um, I did this sort of calculation on my Twitter page and feel free to follow me if you want to. I, I talk a lot, of, a lot of nonsense on there occasionally, so bear that in mind. Um, if you take the $10.8 million uh, in sales and you multiply that by 13% for the quarter, which is the contribution that we believe uh, the PlayStation 5 sales had, or the PlayStation 5 controller sales had on the IMMR revenue this quarter, we get about $1.4 million. And if you divide that by roughly $4 million uh, units sold, we give you, give you about 25 to 30 cents. And I, I give the 25 to 30 cents range because um, there's more than 4 million units sold, but also there might have been other things that sort of contribute to gaming also increasing its its share of the revenue for IMMR this quarter. So if you think of those things, um, it's not too bad, but it's not amazing. But when you begin to consider actually, well, maybe Microsoft will look to use the, the haptic feedback in a, a new generation of their Xbox One Series X console Sony will use it in their VR consoles. And then maybe there'll be other avenues for using this technology in other products, you know. I think now with all things considered, I think this is a medium conviction for me. I think the market is sort of undervaluing the potential of the haptic technology. I'm not saying it's an, a massive market, but it's definitely got something more than the market's currently valuing it out. And with the current revenue, the, cut, cut, the cutting of costs and many more things, um, I think there's more potential here than what the stock price at the moment shows. And for that reason, I'm, I'm going to hold. I've got shares. I've got a few options and I'll take it into the future. So, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.